this is from reviewer request. He was looking at this circuit and uh, didn't make sense to him. And I can kind of understand why. So I thought it would be a great learning experience for everybody to take a look at maybe what looks like a super complicated circuit and start breaking it down into individual components and, and try to figure this thing out. So what is this? Well, it's a, a current source. It looks really weird, but it's a current source. And it's from a um, six and a half digit DVM. It's a Hewlett Packard 34401, a very, very popular uh, multimeter. And when you measure ohms, you force a current and then you measure a voltage. And this is the part of the meter that forces the current. So you output an exact one milliamp, 100 microamps, 10 microamps. You output a specific current and then you measure the voltage and that gives you the, gives you the resistance. So this is the circuit. Um, uh, so yeah, we're going to have a voltage reference. So this is a VREF. It's going to then go into this circuit. So we'll talk about that one first. And then there's some switching here. So this is a um, analog switch. And what it's doing is it's selecting different resistors. So these will become the ranges, the one milliamp, 100 microamps. Those are the ranges. And then there's some output stuff over here and then some really bizarre stuff over here. Okay. So let's go to the first part here and try to figure out what's going on. All right, so the first concept we need to get across is a, a current source. And this is a very uh, common current source. This is often used in a DC load. And so you'll have your uh, device here and then you'll connect it to this DC load and it'll pull it down to ground with a constant current. Well, how does this work? Well, um, if you want to set up a current, okay, we have some voltage divided by some resistance. So this is our voltage and this is our resistance. Now, the way that op amps work is the plus input and the minus input are the same. The op amp does everything it can to make sure these two are the same. So if this is V1 here, then we can input V1 here. So whatever voltage we want here, we can input it here and then we'll get this, uh, we'll get this current. Now, one of the problems with this circuit, of course, is that the uh, transistor requires some current to make it operate. So if we have a uh, if we have a transistor, we have a certain amount of current that goes this away, but we have a certain amount of current that goes this away. So we have a base current and we have a collector current. Now the base current's gonna be low. Let's say we have a, 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 a beta equal to 100. Um, then we'll have, let's say we have one milliamp here, we'll have one one hundredth of a milliamp going here, but that's not very accurate. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace the, uh, there, we're gonna replace the transistor with a FET. Now we have, you know, a gig ohm input to the FET, right? many hundreds of mega ohms. And so you'll have very, very little gate current. And so we're gonna build this out of a FET instead of out of a transistor, okay? All right, so we're gonna be talking about this input section here. And this op amp and this transistor is exactly the circuit that I showed previously. And there's a resistor, okay? There's either this resistor, there's some switching here. so. This thing either has this resistor or this resistor, so it's it's a uh, you can choose one or the other or both, right? And so um, we're going to be choosing one or the other, and so it's exactly the same circuit I said as before. We're going to set some voltage. We're going to set some voltage right here, okay? That goes through that resistor. All right. In fact, we want to set that voltage right here um, across that resistor. And it's going to be fed back around to the input here, okay? So if this is our V1, okay, then we need to program a V1 here, and it'll go into the op amp here. So whatever here and here. So we're gonna set this up, and we're gonna have a very precise current that we set up. And we're gonna use, they call it a plus seven volt VREF, okay? And so we're gonna have, um, a particular um, current 
and we're going to have current equals voltage divided by resistance. So we're going to have 7 volts divided by 40K. Okay. So if we get our calculator. All right. And we're going to get uh, 0.18 milliamps. Milliamps. Okay. Now that current's going to come through here. It'll come through here into this resistor here. And what is that? That is a 28.57, okay? If we have 28.57K and we have 0 0.00018 amps, okay? We are going to get about 5.14. 4 volts. Okay. Um, all right. So if we take this seven volt VREF and there's a bunch of losses and there's some resistances and stuff in here and everything, we can adjust this front end such that we get exactly five volts. Okay. We're going to get exactly five volts. And why do we want exactly five volts? Well, if we look at these resistors over here, if we put five volts with 5K, we're gonna get one milliamp. We take five volts with 550K, we're gonna get 100, milli, 100 microamps. Five volts with 500K, you get the idea, right? So these are our ranges. So we, we're gonna set this up so that we basically get five volts across, across this resistor, okay? That's what it's gonna be set up. We're gonna get five volts across that resistor. Let's take a look at this circuit. This is also going to be a constant current. We're gonna have a resistor at the top this time. So our device that we want to send current through is down here. So we wanna set up a, uh, a known voltage. So we're gonna measure the voltage across this resistor. And if we know that voltage in the resistor, that's the current. So that will be the current that flows, that flows through this thing. So um, if, we know certain things. We can set up some voltage here such that this voltage, let's say it's V prime. If we put in V prime, then we will have a V across the resistor, okay? All right? So V prime is going to be here, V prime. And then there's going to be some other voltage up here that we really don't know about. But if we know we set V prime correctly, we will get V. And we actually want to set that to five volts, okay? And so we want we want a V prime that we know will give us five volts across the resistor. Well, well, how do we do that? All right. So the circuit that we've been looking at is over here, okay? Here's our here's our resistors, and they come down here and they get they get selected with a switch, and they go into this op amp and into the FET, and the bottom of the resistor, we want this to be a certain voltage. We want the voltage across the resistors to be five volts. So we want this voltage at the bottom to come into our op amp. So it's gonna come into here. So what voltage here will give us the correct voltage? Because we our top voltage is kind of unknown almost, right? Well, what we do know is remember, we just set up this fancy circuit over over here, and that set of voltage here such that you have exactly five volts across this resistor. Well, if we put this voltage over here, it will also be five volts across that resistor. And if we can put it here, right? So we're gonna use this voltage as our reference. So it's gonna come around here and go also go into the op amp, right? So what this op amp does is it makes sure that this bottom voltage is set to the same voltage here, right? And then we know that if we set those two voltages the same, we will have five volts across these resistors. And if we have five volts across these resistors, we will have one milliamp, 100 microamps, 10 microamps, okay? So that's what this circuit is doing, okay? There's a protection diode in here and some other things, right? Doesn't really matter. There's a capacitor here to uh, make sure it doesn't oscillate, you know, kind of calm it down. Um, and then there's this little circuit over here that I think has to do with um, some 
things that aren't being used. There's a switch here that we're not going to be tur turning on. I just covered that up. Um, this switch here, I don't think that's being used. Maybe it's being used during calibration or something like that, but I don't think it's being used when it's, when the circuit is actually running. So we can kind of ignore that for now. What we do know is that we spent a lot of money over here. We, we, we got some nice resistors and we have a, a calibrated VRAF and it's all been adjusted so that we have exactly five volts across these resistors and we will have exact currents. Now, why do it so complicated? Well, it's because this thing here, U102 slash D, uh, this thing here is a fancy resistor that's a whole bunch of deposited resistors on a ceramic substrate. And what that means is they all have the same temperature coefficient. So if this one drifts, these all drift the same amount. And so it's self-regulating with temperature. Whatever voltage it takes to get here, okay, we're always in introducing a constant current. So it's all going to track with temperature and that's why they do it the way they do it, right? So what did this whole thing do? Well, it, it uh, created a current in this direction, okay, equal to either one milliamp, 100 microamps, 10 microamps, um, and that's going to then go into our uh, front, out to the front panel, go into some unknown, and then it will go to ground, okay? So this current here will continue to go down through ground, and it will go through the, the device that we're testing. And so we know that we have exactly, say, one milliamp through this device, and then we can measure its voltage, and then we'll measure its resistance. Okay, so that's the basics of this current source, all right? Now, there's still that weird thing on the output, so we need to take a look at that. Okay, I wanted to show this first. So here are the different ohms ranges of the meter. Uh, over here is all of our, our ranges. And then these are the currents that we're gonna set up, right? We're gonna set up one milliamp, 100 micro, all these things, right? And there'll be some compliance voltages and stuff and anything. And it says reference R202, R201. That was the very first resistors that we saw. They were on the far left-hand side of the schematic at the very, very low. So they either set up one one um, um, condition, okay? So these resistors are going to set up a condition where we have five volts across the uh, source resistors, okay? And these, this um, particular resistor is going to set up half a volt, all right? And if you remember, this was 40K and this is 400K. So yeah, so this resistor sets up five volts, this resistor sets up half a volt, and then we have on that ceramic substrate, we have a 5K, 50K, 500K, one meg, and then those together set up our, our ranges uh, for uh, the currents. We have either have one milliamp, 100 microamps, 10 microamps, that kind of thing. So there you go, that's what it does. Let's talk about that output circuit. So this is on the output. Our current source is over here, okay? Uh, so we've, we've, cre we've created a current, and then our uh, device under test is going to be over here, okay? So here's our, here's our device under test is over here. And the current is just gonna go along here. Now, it doesn't really matter if we drop any voltage here. It doesn't matter, it's in the current path. So if we set up one milliamp, one milliamp will go all the way through all of this stuff, okay? This might drop some voltage, but it won't drop any current. It's just gonna go all the way through this stuff. So what is all of this stuff? Well, it has nothing to do with the current being generated. The current being generated has already been done over here, okay? This is a protection circuit. What is it protecting against? Well, it's protecting against us doing stupid things with our, um, with our multimeter. What if we accidentally put a thousand volts on the input? Will it kill your meter? Um, so the first thing they do is they put in a diode here. Okay, so uh, this is a diode. And what does that diode do? Well, it protects any, um, any reverse voltages. Okay, nothing can go, nothing can go Nothing can go through this uh, this diode because it is um, reverse biased. But what about 
voltages that can conduct in this direction, okay? Well, they're going to make it through this. So negative negative voltages will get through this um, will get through this diode. So um, we say, okay, well, we'll put in a uh, we'll put in another diode in the other direction, okay? And then that'll protect us with with both voltages. Well, now you can't get any current through it. You need your you need your one milliamp to go through this thing. And if you have two diodes, that ain't going to work either, right? Um, you probably could put, put some protection diodes to ground. Okay. So you could, you could try to put in some diodes to maybe to ground. Okay. But what does that do? Well, that creates leakage and that's going to steal some of the current that we've just generated. All right. Okay. So if diodes only get you halfway there, these are going to get you the other halfway there. These are there to protect from negative voltages and it's going to rely on the um, collector base breakdown voltage of these transistors. All right, so the way that I'm thinking about this is that we have a voltage coming in, a negative voltage coming in, and um, each one of these, um, junctions is gonna act like a Zener diode. It's gonna, it's gonna be, a, it's gonna be an, a, a, an avalanche breakdown, but each one is kind of like a Zener diode. And so um, there'll be a partial, um, only some of the voltage will make it through this one, only some of the voltage here, only some of the voltage. And the each, each time it gets less and less and less and less. And if the collector emitter breakdown voltage is 70 volts, you have, you know, maybe, maybe it's a hundred, let's say, say it's a hundred volts. Well, if you have eight, of these in there, you have 800 volts of Zener, right? So these transistors are probably chosen to have maybe 120 volts breakdown. Get you, get you, it gets you to that thousand volt compliance that you're looking for. And so, um, of course, Zener diodes work fine in the far direction, and in the reverse direction, they um, eat up some voltage, you know, the, there's some threshold before the voltage can make it through. So think of it as a, just a whole bunch of Zeners. Um, maybe you could actually design this circuit with a whole bunch of Zeners. Um, and maybe this one's just better for whatever reason, or it's just clever and the guy wanted to put it in there. I don't know. So comment below if you just put in a whole bunch of Zeners, um, or maybe Zeners don't go high enough in voltage. I forget how high Zeners you, you can get them, but anyway, that's sort of what it's doing. Um, there's a, there's a funny little, a little bit of just super small bias curtain here to keep these transistors doing what they do in all conditions. So I'm not quite sure what that little, what that little circuit down there does, but, um, yeah, there you go. That's as much as I know. Okay. Well, there you go. Uh, an explanation of this strange circuit, um, definitely a complicated current source.